Hi, welcome to my tutorial today. Um, today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be building a laser eye Superman-esque AI that will chase the player around uh, throughout the game and we're going to try to make this in under 15 minutes. So what it's going to look like is basically it's going to look like this. So I made a little testing map and we have them in here and he's going to fly around He's going to come towards me and try to shoot me with laser eyes. Uh, and he'll chase me like that. And he will chase me forever. So in order to do that, I created a folder called Superman AI in my project. And the first thing we need to do is we need to make an Anim VP. Now I have a flying animation from Mixamo and I got the character from Mixamo.com. You can download those as well. They are free. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an animation blueprint. We're going to get this from the character I have, which is named CH47. Okay, we're going to call this Superman and VP. Okay, and then we're just going to drag this flying animation in. And that's, that's it. That's all we need for the animation blueprint for this tutorial. And now we need to get the laser eyes. Now this is from another tutorial, but I will show you what it is. So it is basically just a sphere that I stretched out and put a box glider over. It does have a uh, emissive material on it, a red emissive material, but you can make your own or use particles or whatever you prefer. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to first, actually, yeah, first we need to go add sockets. So I actually have them. Um, but go to the head and type at and click right click add socket. Once you do that, rename it what you want. I name mine L eyes L and L eyes R for the left and right eye. Okay, so we need to go create a character now. We're gonna call this BP Superman. Okay, we are going to add our character mesh which is this one, drop them down, line them up, okay? Then we are going to Superman A and MVP, add the animation blueprint we added. Okay, we're gonna delete the begin overlap, we're gonna move event to down, and we're gonna create a custom event. I do apologize if I'm going fast, this is a slightly um, advanced tutorial. So, we're going to create a custom event. If you don't know what any of these are, there is a lot of documentation on Unreal's website that will tell you what all of this is. Okay, so we need to get a controller cell compile set focus AI. Set focus AI, and then we are going to add the new focus as the get player character. Okay, so now he will focus on and look at the player. Okay, then what we need to do is spawn the laser eyes or spawn actor from class. Okay, we are going to promote this to a variable. I'm going to call this L, L eyes, L for laser eyes, L. And then we're going to do this again. And we're going to call this promote to variable. L eyes R. Okay, so we are going to split the struct pin of the transform. Okay, and then we are going to get socket location of the mesh, and then get socket rotation of the mesh. And I'm just going to do this, bring this down. Okay. And then I'm going to copy paste this. All right. All right, so now I know what I named it. Um, just make sure you copy paste the name because if you if you don't spell this properly, Unreal Engine won't know exactly what to find. So like if you don't have caps on here or something, um, it won't know what to find. Okay, so this is gonna be the left eye. This is going to be the right eye. Okay. Uh, laser eyes. Okay. Laser 
eyes. Remember, we need to spawn a laser on both eyes. Okay. And then we need to go to event tick. And we need to check is valid twice. Okay, is valid. And we need to get the laser eyes L and laser eyes R. If you don't do this, you will run into a null pointer error issue and it will bog down your game and possibly crash it. So do make sure you check to make sure they are valid because event tick runs every frame. And if it doesn't spawn before this is run, it will create null pointer errors. So, um, so if these don't spawn in before this is called, it will uh, cause null pointer errors. Okay, so what we need to do now is update the actor location and rotation. And this is the easy part because we can just copy and paste this stuff. We can just copy and paste this. So copy the, the rotation location socket. Um, the reason we're doing this on Eventic is if we just spawn it, it won't update with the mesh. So like if they fly around, it won't update where they are. So we need to do this um, and update it. Okay. And then remember they are spawning from the socket, so that's that's why we're getting socket location and rotation. Okay. And then the final thing we need to do is begin play. Uh, we need to set the movement mode to flying. Movement mode to flying, otherwise they will just fall through the ground. Uh, basically flying will turn off gravity. And then we need to create a timeline. Uh, we'll call this fly. Okay, we're gonna create a float. We're just gonna throw some numbers in here. I don't really care what it is. Um, okay. Uh, the reason we're doing that is it's a custom tick, uh, but it runs on the animation timeline, so it'll look smoother than if we just did it on tick. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get what's called a V interp. Uh, this will this will vector interp. So interp is basically interpolation. Uh, if you know anything about animation, basically it will smoothly move between two points. So that's what we want to do. Set actor location. Uh, so we need to use that to set the actor location. If we don't do this, it will more than likely uh, jitter and like teleport around. Uh, so we need to smoothly move between locations. Okay. So now we need to, for the current, we want to get the actor location. Okay. This actor right here, the one we're in. For the target, we want to get the player character. And then we want to get the we want to get the location, and then we want to add that location to another vector. Uh, because remember, we do want them to be higher than vector plus vector. There we go. Because we do want them to be higher than the player, so we need them about 500 above the player, and let's say about 50 behind them on the y-axis. Okay. So now the interp speed is how smooth it will move, which is what the animation track was for. Um, this should be fine for it. Uh, but this can choose, this can like modify like how fast and slow it'll move. Uh, for the get delta time, we need to get world delta time delta seconds. Um, if you are a Unity user, this is time dot delta time. I believe it's the same in C plus plus as well. Uh, so now that we have that, we need to do one more thing. Uh, we need to laser eyes. Call this function that we created down here. Okay. So that is actually all of the code. Uh, I apologize that went by really fast. I'm going to explain now that it's all here what this does. Um, and I'm going to have it on screen so you guys can see what to do. So the first thing we had to do is we had to create the laser eyes. We had to like spawn them in and tell the player and tell the AI what to focus on, which is the player. So we got the AI itself, the controller of it. Then we got the player character and told it to look at the player character. Then we spawned the laser eyes on both eyes based on the sockets that we created on the skeleton. Okay, now that spawns them in. 
but it won't actually like update their location. So that's what this is on Tick. Now, I would not recommend using Tick in a commercial project, but for the case of the tutorial, it is all right. Um, for the Tick, we are checking if this variable and this variable, so these two actors are valid, otherwise, so we don't get null pointer errors. And then we're just updating the location and the rotation of the eye socket. That's where they're spawned at. That's where they respond. Um, and then on begin play, we're just telling it, hey, fly, start, start the game as flying. Then on a custom animation tick, we want to set the actor location to smoothly move between the current location that we're at and the player location plus about 500 on the Z axis. So 500 above the player. Okay, and then we do that based on delta time and then we call the laserize function. Uh, now, because we have the, actually, there is a, there is a mess up in here. Uh, we need to add a do once node because if we don't, we will spawn, we will spawn thousands of laser eyes. So we're gonna do do once, okay? And we're not gonna reset it. And that is, that is basically it. Spawn the, spawn the laser eyes, update their location and set the movement of where you want to go. Okay, so now if we put this in here, let's, so I'm gonna spawn right here. Okay. So you know it. Okay, so we're gonna delete him. We're gonna move him up here. Okay, and we're gonna move him far away so we can see him move towards us. Okay, so as we can see, where is he? Should be moving towards us. Okay, I think I know what happened. So we need to go in the timeline and loop it. So what's gonna happen is if we don't, it's just gonna do this once and then never do it again. So it won't be able to move towards us. Okay, so I figure I figured out what's happening. Um, we forgot to set, or I forgot to set the variables in here. So basically the laser eyes are pushing the uh, the AI around. So now he will fly as he should. And he will come down here, fly it, and shoot laser eyes at us. So I apologize about that. Um, but uh, yes, that was the issue. Just make sure that your laser eyes are set as a target location or it'll mess up the location of the mesh. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more specialized uh, tutorials, hit the sub button and like the video. Thank you.